I just recently bought the Fleer C2 thermal imaging camera. I bought this camera because the extreme price difference and the size. This camera is to the point to the size where it'll fit in your pocket. I carry the E40BX, which is a big bulky camera. I mean, it re gives you great pixels, great image. It, sh it reads temperature really far away. And uh, I was gonna see if I could maybe replace it or add this into my toolbox wherever I find something, then I can pull out the E40BX. But this camera is only $500 and the E40BX is $5,000, but I bought that five years ago, so the price has probably changed on it. But this camera right here, my goal of this video is to determine how this camera holds up compared to the E40BX. I have this perfect house that I inspected two days ago where I had the extreme temperature difference between hot and cold. The temperature is a little bit higher today, but I still think it will work. The house had a lot of missing insulation and also I had a water leak in an area. Get this bad boy charged up and let's go check it out. We're at the property that I inspected two days ago. Last time it was 40 degrees outside. Today it's in the mid 50s. I'm not gonna get the same contrast that I did last time I was here, but it still should be good enough to test both these cameras. All right, let's go see what I'm gonna go find. The area where we had the most contrast was in the living room. I'm gonna start the test with the E40BX. This is still a really great camera. I found out that it's discontinued this morning, but the only thing that's ever gone wrong with it is the flaps. They broke on both sides. Um, it still performs, still does a, a really good job at finding all the issues I'd like to find. So I'm going to do another scan, take a few pictures, and I'm going to take a few pictures with the smaller C2 camera too as well. All right, scanning the area next to the chimney, I'm getting a reading of about 65 degrees low and about 115 degrees high, which is probably reading the light bulb up there. This would normally mean with a reading like this, I would see a, that the insulation is sliding out of place. And then right here on the base of the uh, chimney you can see that the insulation is just missing it slid all the way down or it's just not there and some really high cold spots we had two rainy days yesterday so it is a possible area of moisture intrusion this is an area that i normally hit with my prote meter we're going to scan this other wall here where i know there's missing insulation and we're going to be able to compare the two cameras okay scanning this back wall up here in the attic area i knew there was missing insulation so this is a perfect contrast of, I can see that it's the low is of 69, the high is 80, which is the air vent over here. And you can clearly see the square marks of where the insulation should be. Um, we're gonna see if the FLIR C2 can pick this up. Okay, scanning with the FLIR C2 here, I do see a cold spot right in front of the chimney where I saw some missing insulation with the E40BX. But it, what I see on the FLIR C2 from what I normally read, I wouldn't say this is missing. I would just say, hey, the insulation's not set 100% and you just need to add a little bit. But right here underneath the chimney where I saw that there was missing insulation with the E40BX, you can definitely see it with the, the FLIR C2. You can see that it's not there, but those two spots where I thought that there might be moisture, it doesn't show up at all. It just looks like missing insulation. So I wouldn't normally pull out my moisture meter to test those areas if I was scanning with the FLIR C2. Okay, moving on with the back wall with the FLIR C2, I'd almost say the image is pretty identical. I can definitely see, if not maybe better, I can definitely see the insulations just missing altogether. And uh, it's a very clear image that it, it does find it. It finds the uh, missing insulation. It's pretty cool. Okay, two days ago I found moisture in the area, this area on the back side of the chimney with the other FLIR camera. Looking at the, through the FLIR C2, you can see that there is a difference in temperature in that area. If I was using the other FLIR camera, I wouldn't normally think that that was moisture. But the FLIR C2 is definitely showing a temperature difference. So what you would have to do is just get used to using the FLIR C2 compared to the FLIR E40BX. The image quality isn't as accurate, but I can definitely see that there is a temperature difference in this area, which would you would have to get used to saying, hey, I need to further investigate this area. What I thought was interesting today was I had, I went out there two separate days and got two different thermal readings. 
the first day was in the 40s and today was in the was about 55 showing you that thermal cameras really can't see through walls they're only as good as what they can see that day the first day you could see that there was about a 30 degree difference and it showed you a really clear picture and then on the second day it was like a 15 degree difference and it just wasn't as good you could just see little cold spots where the missing insulation was when it comes to testing both of these cameras the FLIR E40BX still outperformed the uh, FLIR C2 we we predicted that we knew that that was going to happen how much technology is crammed in this little little box is pretty amazing. I mean, it still kind of kept up. I mean, it was pretty close. Anywhere that the the, the more expensive FLIR found an, an area where there was a temperature difference, the FLIR C2 still showed it, but it just wasn't as clear. So if you did decide to use this camera, you just want to, if you see any kind of temperature difference, you're going to want to raise an alarm a lot faster than you would with a more expensive camera that shows a very clear image. Am I gonna still put these in the field? I will, I have three of them. That was just one test and I think what you really have to do, I think I'm repeating myself, is just get used to looking at the picture and get used to reading it and seeing what you're looking at. And then testing it, always back up your test with the moisture meter and uh, trying to find out if there's insulation there or, insulation there or not. All right. Uh, that's a pretty good test. First tool review. If you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and please always like and share the videos. Thanks guys. Bye.